to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about Abraxas, my jeweled Lacerda. I know a lot of you guys have wanted an update on him and I really haven't made much content on him since I got him, which was about almost exactly a year ago. I got him like last October and he was my spooky lizard of the month. Um, but he has been very hands off ever since then. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with jeweled Lacerdas or not, but they're typically a very skittish species of lizard. However, I have seen a lot of pictures and videos where people have adults and they handle them and they're calm and they kind of seem like a bearded dragon that just chills with them. And that is my dream. However, it's not the most realistic dream with this species because jeweled Lacertas are just typically so skittish and they're so fast. And when I first got mine, he was a tiny baby. So of course the babies are gonna be even more scared and skittish and just completely unhandleable. Um, I'm sure some people can handle them um, and try to catch them somehow. They basically just, the breeder, he always posts pictures and videos holding the baby jeweled Lacertas. And I was like, how do you do that? And he's like, you just gotta be fast. <laughs> I'm not fast and for me, I don't know what it is, but like if I'm stressing out an animal, I can like feel their stress. Like I don't enjoy it, they're not enjoying it. It's not a pleasant experience for either of us. So I am not the type of person to try and like force anything on an animal that doesn't want it, especially like, like for instance, Chancho, my blue tongue skink, who I'm sure over time, if I consistently try to handle him, he would adjust. However, it's just such an unpleasant experience for him. And because it's unpleasant for him, it's unpleasant for me too. And just, it's not worth it. So I respect his boundaries. Um, so I'm trying a new system with um, Abraxas. And instead of just forcing handling on him and trying to capture him, um, I'm trying it my own way. I'm sure other people have tried my way as well. I typically don't see it very often though, and it does require a lot of patience. I myself feel like I have a good amount of patience because I keep chameleons, and chameleons are not the most trusting species either, and it does take a lot of time and patience for them to trust you and come around and eventually accept handling with you. So because I have that experience with chameleons, I have no problem being patient with Abraxas, which is why I've basically waited nearly a year to even attempt handling with him. My main fear besides like stressing him out would be because he's so fast, I don't want to lose him in the reptile room. Um, that just, ugh, it would be a nightmare. So... Yeah, it may not seem like I have a lot of stuff in here, but like there's a lot of stuff in here, guys. Like a lot of crevices and heavy enclosures. And if he like went into a crevice or like this area back there, we don't talk about that area. <laughs> it is literally like a graveyard of just crap. Like old things that I didn't use, like hides, UVB um, projectors, like random random things that is just where things go to just die and wait maybe I'll use them again maybe not but like getting into that area is really difficult so like clearing it out just hasn't really happened and if he got back into all of that like it would be a complete nightmare so I don't really want to take him out knowing that he could just like bolt at any second and disappear somewhere so I'm trying my own method which is very similar to what I do with my chameleons. And what's really good about Abraxas and Jeweled Lacertas in general is that, yes, they're skittish, but they are highly intelligent and they are very, very curious. You can tell that they are curious about you and their surroundings. And there's things going on in that brain. They aren't just sitting there without a thought. Like you can tell they're thinking. They're thinking about if they can trust you, what you're trying to do. Um, they know. And even if I'm moving around, he learns my movements. He learns how I feed him. 
he is paying attention to every little thing that I'm doing and he is retaining it. So he is a very impressive and very intelligent species of lizard. Um, I don't know if I've witnessed it with too many other species. I can definitely see why people say they're like a mini tegu or a mini monitor because they got a smart little brain in that head. They definitely do. Um, so my approach to this is basically just my first year, I put his food in his little white bowl and he learned that he, and I would put the bowl specifically right in front of the enclosure that's close to me. So he would have to come near me in that bowl to get his food. And why this is good for training them is because they have to learn to trust you a little bit. That's the first step. The first step is coming near you and not hiding in order to get food. Because when I first got him, I didn't see him for weeks. And I was terrified because I put him in a four by two by two, 120 gallon Zen Habitats enclosure and he was a little pipsqueak. And I, and he was hiding so well in there. I gave him so many hiding places for him to feel safe and secure in that large enclosure, but it was impossible to find him. And I was like, oh my God, is he in there? And I was getting nervous. He like escaped or something, but I would see poop. I'm like, okay, that's how I know he's in there. He's pooping. So my idea was to put the food bowl right front and center. So that way, if he wanted to eat, he would have to learn to trust a little bit and come to the front in order to eat. And over time of him doing this, I would be in the reptile room, whether I'm watching him, whether I'm feeding other animals or misting or doing something else in the reptile room, he's seeing me around and he's learning to trust that he's safe, he's safe enough to eat and I'm not doing anything to him. And over time, I would even open the door and he would start to actually come towards me because he's learning that I am the food source and I'm not a threat anymore because I'm the one providing his food. So that is like the first major step. It does take time. You have to be so patient with lizards. But I think that having that patience and respect for them rather than just stressing them out and wrangling and grabbing them and forcing them to be held and realize that they're not dying, so it's okay is just not my preferred method. I just don't find that respectful for the lizard and it's stressful for the lizard and for me. So just not about it. I'd rather wait a year and have him learn I'm not a threat and come to me for food, which is what I've done. So that has gone very well. And over time as he's eating and coming to the front and realizing that I'm giving him food, he again is watching my behaviors and he starts thinking, he still thinks to this day, he thinks that these fingers are the food source. So I have to be very careful with how I'm approaching feeding him. I cannot feed him with my hands because he will bite my fingers without a doubt. And even with the tongs, when I tong feed him, a lot of the time he bites the tong and not the worm. And so whenever he's seeing my hands, I put the worm in his bowl and he's seeing my hands with the worm and then eventually he realizes that it's in the bowl, but he's not making the connection that my hand is dropping the worm into the bowl. So that's why I'm a little concerned still because I know that he does not trust my hands or my fingers. He thinks that, well, it's not about trust. He just thinks this is gonna be a food source. So I need to teach him that that is not a food source. So what I started doing in the past week, which I just decided out of nowhere, you know what, I'm gonna just try this and see how it goes. I have to wear a sweater and I cover my hand in my fist so that way my fingers aren't exposed. I put my arm in the enclosure, which he's very suspicious of and he's like, what the hell is that? I don't know if I trust that, but because he's so food driven, he will climb up onto my arm in order to get the worm. And I have video footage of him doing it. The first time I did it, I didn't film it. And I just did it on my own. And he was so good. Um, he sat on my arm for about like three seconds. I wanted to get a picture of him. But then by that time, he bolted off. And keep in mind, as I'm doing this, I'm pretty much keeping my arm mostly in the enclosure. Because again, I'm worried about him 
running off and getting lost in the reptile room somewhere and I don't want that to happen. So I'm mainly keeping my arm within the enclosure as I'm trying to get him on my arm. Um, so the second time I did this, I did film it and I showed you guys the process. I'm going to be putting all this footage in the video so that we can actually see him and how he did it. Um, again, always keeping my fist covered and no fingers on display because I know he'll think it's food. And after the first worm, he wasn't trusting me so much. He, I think he was a little bit more full. He was a little bit less food driven at that point. And then he, after getting on my arm once, he's realizing it's okay to be on my arm, but he is still not very trusting of it. But over time, if I consistently do this, he will start to learn and feel safe being on me which is a huge milestone and will just really progress the trust and level of handling that I'm going to have with him. So I'm going to keep doing that. Um, it's going really well though. Eventually I would like to, once he's more comfortable and I can really like have him on me for an extended amount of time. The last time I did it, I think he sat on me for like maybe like 10 or 15 seconds and he was just staring at me. He was okay. I actually took him out a little bit of the enclosure, like around here on my arm, and he was fine. He was like, okay, I'm getting food. I'm on you. But once he eats and is on my arm initially, if I go to do it multiple times in that same day, he's probably going to be like, no, I don't trust you and your weird arm that you're trying to lure me onto. And sometimes it does take him a long time to finally like risk the temptation and actually climb onto my arm. If he can avoid it, he will try to, because again, we're still working on that trust and seeing a big giant arm in the enclosure is definitely something that he is not used to. Um, so it's definitely something new for him that he just has to realize is safe. And then eventually we're just gonna keep working on handling with him and that's how I'm doing it so far. Eventually, once he's more comfortable, my goal will be to not have to use a sleeve. Although I think some people do like to use sleeves because their nails are really sharp. I haven't experienced it because I haven't like held him or felt his nails yet, but I'm sure I will. Um, I also want him to learn that my fingers are not food, which is why I'm either feeding him directly with tongs or only in the food bowl. Or I take the tongs and use the tongs to put the food in the food bowl instead of my fingers because he's still making that association that these are like sausages or something and he wants to eat them. So those are my tips and tricks so far and how things are going. It is going really well. Um, maybe in another year, it would be amazing if I could just be like, here he is and do an entire video and just have him chilling. Like that would be an absolute dream come true, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen. And if it doesn't, that's totally fine. I will respect that. I still love keeping him just like I love keeping my blue tongue skink. That is like, don't touch me. Like I will love them regardless of what they allow me to do with them. But obviously if you're able to build that trust and work up to a handling relationship, it's just going to be that much more rewarding in the end. So it's definitely something I want to continue doing and working on. Um, so yeah, that is my update with Abraxas and how I'm working on handling with him. If you guys have any questions or even advice to offer me, I would love to hear it. I know some people also recommend when you're trying to get a lizard to trust you to put like an article of your clothing within their enclosure because they can smell it and they can start learning that it's safe and it's you. So I may start doing that as well because I am just sticking my arm and sweater into the enclosure for him to come up on to eat me, not to eat me, to eat food. <laughs> so I don't know, I might try that, but so far just like the whole thing of like keeping a routine and like how I open the door, how I'm feeding him, how I'm luring him on. Like again, they're paying attention to every single movement. They are very, very smart animals. So just very cool. I'm very excited to be able to do any of this. I never thought I would actually own a jeweled Lacerda and the fact that I get to work with him now is just so exciting for me. Um, we're making progress finally. So I'm very, very happy with it. Um, so yeah, that is today's video. I hope that it was interesting at least. Maybe you learned something from it. Maybe I'll learn something from it if you guys have some tips in the comments. But 
Either way, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you guys in the next one.